Well, this week the market recorded its biggest weekly loss in the last seven months. The Nifty and the Sensex closed with nearly 3% losses this week and financials were the biggest drag. On the Editor's Roundtable, we put the spotlight on HDFC Bank. We also talk about Indian bonds being included in JP Morgan's Emerging Market Index, which was a big headline of the week, and a deep dive into select stocks that have seen a big run largely due to limited float. Hello and welcome to Editor's Roundtable. I'm Sonia Shanoi. With me are my colleagues Anuj, Nimesh and Nigel. Uh, folks, you know, this was uh, quite a, I mean, you can't call it debilitating, but it was a week when the bears took control of the market, right? We saw a fall after a while and a considerable amount of fall. Yeah, I mean, the week where the bears said, uh, I am alive, right? <laughs> <laughs> because still last week it looked like, you know, the bulls were in complete control. Uh, and, you know, normally when we start to cheer too much, is when the bear normally comes. A reality out. check comes in. Yes, and that's what happened, I think, this week. I think everyone was celebrating last week. Uh, you know, targets of 21,000, etc. were being given and how things have turned. By the way, this was a truncated week. Mm. It doesn't feel like that by the Friday because of all the, yeah. you know, action that took place. Uh, but I think this this week has, I'll call it trend reversal week, Sonia. Yeah. It's changed the trend of the market and uh, the market for the last two, three days closed at the lowest point of the day which is an indication that some kind of trend reversal is happening. I almost forgot about that midweek holiday, actually. <laughs> there was so much that happened this week, right? You know, in terms of market action, you know, it reminded me of when you had Sachin, Sehwag as well as Ganguly. They used to be the top three batsmen. You know, and when they used to start off well, India used to do well. This week, you had Reliance, ICICI Bank and HDFC Bank. Between the three of them, close on 75% of the fall was accounted by three of them itself. Yes. So, when those top guys don't do well, you know, sometimes you feel the pressure, but hopefully, you know, the mid, the, uh, the, the mid level or the, you know, the lower, the tail can wag hopefully. But otherwise, this week was a little bit concerning. Yeah, I guys, even in, in this midst of 3% cut for the Nifty and Sensex, the broader markets have still outperformed. Yeah. Yeah. And this is despite selling pressure. In fact, on the last couple of days, the feedback I'm getting is, at least the smarter HNIs uh, are looking to book profits. We got some calls as well, right, from, from the likes of Lawrence Balanco saying that mid-cap index is looking like some bit of uh, consolidation with a negative buys is expected. In fact, suggested some profit booking in some select mid-caps as well. So, uh, despite all this and the fact that the Swata Rechen have started booking profit, the mid-cap index momentum continued and it was led by the PSU. So, uh, on index, it may look like a 3% fall a, a kind of consolidation. But the broader market party seems to be continuing, at least for the time being. Yes, uh, it did. But towards the end, even there, Nimesh, you know, I yeah. did notice the advanced decline was getting slightly worse sure. off. But anyway, that for another day. Uh, first, Nimesh, why don't you tell us uh, the feedback from the dealing rooms? So, you know, as I said, you know, uh, while, while the Nifty and Sensex looks like a 3% fall, it was not like uh, there was carnage in the broader market. So, that was a one big takeaway for me. But the clear momentum was in the PSUs and within PSUs, it was a PSU bank stocks. What a move in the PSU bank index, right? You spoke about the breakout in the PSU bank index last week. Yeah. And, and in one week itself, the index is up, I, I think, 6 odd percent, yes. right? And the individual names are up some 8, 10 percent. So, huge momentum in that space. So, that continued. And there were flows as well. In fact, today the feedback was there was a PSU basket buying uh, in, the, in the PSU bank stocks. So, that clearly shows that people are chasing the momentum. I guess uh, the other big takeaway for me was uh, while the market consolidated, uh, the momentum sh seems to be shifting towards the primary market now. Look at the kind of paper which is hitting the market. Uh, this week there were four IPOs, few more are lined up next week as well. So clearly the primary market action is picking up and that's where a lot of, uh, you know, h &I interest and the larger uh, investor interest is also there. Interestingly, I was just looking at uh, the data of IPOs which hit the market in 2023. Surprisingly, not a single issue has given a negative return. So I guess that is also the reason why uh, you know, peop, uh, there is momentum now chasing the IPO market. So that, that clearly stood out for me. And the last is, uh, while, uh, you know, I've been telling about the fundraising plans, I've been also highlighting about the m and activity picking up. We saw a big deal happening this week, Glenmark and, uh, you know, Nirma buying out Glenmark Live. My sense is there are more m and deals lined up for next week and the week, and the week after. And the fundraising trend will continue. So that stood out for me, not only in terms of uh, promoter selling stake, but even the m and activity is picked up in the broader market. The, the point on IPO is fascinating. And, you know, the... Yeah kind of uh, pickup that we've seen in SME space, uh, oh. you know, it gives me a bit that of a nervous feeling. a different feeling. market altogether. Yes. I've, been, I've been meeting a lot of investors yeah. and all. Every second day, there is a, there is a you know, uh, meet, investor meet for the IPO markets. And the whole market has been buzzing. Like, you know, there are so many activities going on. Mm. It's crazy. It's, it's really okay. crazy. In fact, joining us now is Hiren Ved, CEO, uh, Director and CIO at Alchemy Capital Management. Hiren, thanks a lot for joining in. How are you feeling about the market now? There is a bit of a consolidation that we're seeing. You can't call it a correction, really. I mean, it's just sort of, you know, pausing for the moment. Um, are you getting a bit cautious at these levels or would you buy the dip? So, hi, Sonia. I mean, I think we are 
you know, broadly, we, we are all fully invested. So uh, whether it's a pause or a correction, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's really not going to matter too much. But I think we've had a real hard run from April, right? So you've had a back-to-back, month-to-month, month-after-month, very strong moves in the, in the broader markets. And uh, it's quite possible that, uh, you know, at some point in time, you can't have speed and direction all in the same uh, breath. So I think we've had uh, a little bit of a consolidation move, which could even potentially turn into a correction and uh, which is, you know, absolutely fine. I think, I think one of the things that uh, we need to keep in mind is that while uh, you know, there's a lot of good news out there and the momentum has been strong. Oil prices have moved up pretty substantially to $95. Now, obviously, they've corrected from the absolute high. But we need to just keep that in mind that uh, oil above $100 is not good news for us, at least in the short to medium term. It may not really matter in the long run. But in the short to medium term... It could be one reason which could apply the brakes on this momentum in the market. Mm. Okay, all right. Hi, Ren. Uh, good to hear your thoughts. Uh, you know, I wanted your view on HTFC Bank. You know, that one was in spotlight this week after it saw a sharp cut post-brokerage downgrade. The stock is now either at a make or a break level. Well, Anush, you've been looking at this closely. Run us through some data points because this is going to be a driver for the markets from here on as well. Well, absolutely. HDFC Bank is like what Virat Kohli is for the Indian team, right? The biggest stock in the market. And more than just the sheer weight of HDFC Bank, uh, when HDFC Bank does well, you feel good about the market. And when it doesn't, you don't feel good about the market. I mean, that was the key differentiator this week, frankly, HDFC Bank. What changed this week for the market? It was this collapse in HDFC Bank. Now, I'm saying it a make or break level, but because just look at this chart. I think this for me is really the chart that's going to define what happens to HDFC Bank. Uh, this is a trend line that we have drawn from the post-COVID low up until now. And whenever it's taken support here, it's taken support here twice. Once, of course, was immediately after COVID and once it was in 2022. Both times, just look at the kind of move that you've seen. Yeah, this is the kind of move and this is the move. And what has happened now is that you've broken this level. You've broken this trend line. Now, it's just been broken on a, on a two-day basis. Let's see if this sustains or not. But this, for me, is really a make-or-break chart. Now, what are the key points to consider from here on? Now, what were the, some, some of the big worries? Uh, now, I'm not going through all of them because we have uh, limited time. Uh, one of the big worries was HDFC NPAs of 6.7%, which is higher than what it reported at the end of FY23 at 2.9%. Uh, and the concern was, uh, why did this come? Uh, now, I did try to speak to the management uh, and uh, others as well. And the sense I got was that this is because earlier they were an NBFC and they were adhering the NHB norms. Uh, and according to their own prudent calculation, that was the uh, NPA. But now you have to adhere to the RBI rules 90 days means an NPA and that's why this NPA has gone up. Uh, the other thing is uh, what's happening on the margins. Obviously, there's going to be a bit of a margin hit uh, uh, and that's something that the bank has been quite open about. But will it be counted by volumes going up? There are two reasons for that and again, I'm not saying it will happen. That's a big question. 30% of HD, uh, as well HDFC customers banked with HDFC Bank. That number can go up. And only 2% of banks' customers source their home loan from us while HDFC. So, can this margin hit be compensated by cross-selling? By, by, you know, that, I think, is going to be uh, one big factor. The other big factor, which I think uh, not too many have looked at, it was HDFC's holding of 21% in HDFC Bank, which was extinguished. Obviously, that also means that in the consolidated profit, that number is not there. But in that case, there's a holding company discount as well. The net, net impact of this would be EPS accretive. That's something which, of course, when it goes in its favor, will, uh, will be helpful. Uh, the next couple of quarters, though, are going to be extremely soft. Make no mistake about that. And that's what the market is telling. That, you know, we have limited capital. Why to waste it on a stock where for the next two more quarters, there's not going to be earning comfort? Why don't we go to some other stocks? Uh, by the way, one more thing. Just look at HDFC Bank's earnings uh, profile. And this is the first time in last 10 years I'm using value stock for HDFC Bank. Uh, never done that, right? Uh, its price to book has averaged between 4 to f uh, 5 over the last decade. Uh, FY 2021 is when it started to come down. This was also the time when 
Aditya Puri was uh, leaving the bank, right? The executive position and was retiring. And look at where it's come down to now. 2.86 price to book. When was the last time you have seen HDFC bank trade below three times price to book? Even if you look at the price to earnings ratio of HDFC bank, uh, uh, it used to command 27, 28 times. It's now down to 17 points. Uh, uh, the 17 uh, time uh, price to earnings, that's what, what happens, right? And one last thing, I'll leave it with a popular meme in the stock market. Uh, this is the meme which comes back every time there's some kind of a shift in the market. Retail investors are right now just after public sector banks. HDFC and Kotak Bank are worried right now, but the time will come. I'm telling you the time will come. It's just that right now everyone is just obsessed with PSU banks. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, this is this is this so is. Uh, just this explain is that meme to me once again. <laughs> <laughs> who is that girl? Who is the girl in red and who is the girl in blue? Anuj. That boy is Nigel. <laughs> 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 but uh, Hiren, you know that I mean that summed it up really well, right? That the stable stock is more like the wife, and then you know the girlfriend is all of those <laughs> fancy stocks like PSU banks that almost never give you good returns. Uh, your thoughts on how to approach this one? Well, I think uh, uh, you know uh, Anud's table was quite instructive in itself, right? Uh, so if you saw, I'm not going to comment on the meme. I'll leave that to, <laughs> <laughs> to you guys. Uh, but I think the, the table was quite instructive, right? I think what's happened is that, uh, you know, obviously this is a very complex and large merger. Uh, I don't think investors, uh, uh, you know, had thought that some of these adjustments to the book, the higher NPL is something that, and, and by the way, this is the most researched bank in the world, right? Yeah. So it tells you that how much people missed out on what eventually the combined entity would mean both from an accounting perspective and maybe some of the variables that they spoke to the market, uh, you know, uh, having a higher loss number. So I think it's going to take a little bit of time uh, for the investors to get used to it. The second thing is that the derating has happened partly obviously because there was an Aditya Puri premium which is not there anymore. Yeah. And the growth has also slowed down, right? So I think this was a bank which used to year after year grow at 25% pack. Then it went down to consistently 20% pack. Now, if you look at all the consensus numbers, we are talking about a 14, 15, maybe 16% kind of compounding. And therefore, the P multiples or the price to book multiples have also adjusted to the fact that earnings will now compound. Yes, it's still a very solid bank, but it's not going to compound at 20%. It's going to compound at 14, 15%. That's also what the Nifty is going to compound at, right? So if it's so 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 I think what investors may be thinking is that is this a bank which will compound at faster than the nifty earnings and will outperform the benchmark or are there better alternatives that we can look for mm. and I think that's the question it, so I think it will take a couple of quarters for investors to get confidence back to see where the numbers settle right I mean obviously there are great synergies but they need, investors need to see that in the number. And I think until they see that in the numbers, and it's going to take a couple of quarters for these things to settle down, my sense is that, uh, you know, that's what the market is reflecting or the stock price is reflecting, that in the near term, we are not going to see a big outperformance from the bank. But eventually, it will come back if it can prove that it can grow faster. Mm -hmm. All right, you know, one point on HDFC Bank, year to date, it's down close to 6-7%. In the last 10 years, it's never given negative returns. The last time it yeah. gave negative returns was in 2013. 
So hopefully it avoids that feat, you know, from a market perspective. But Sonia, the big news we got late on Friday was with regard to India getting included in the emerging market bond. Big news, right? That was big news, really. And, you know, all the experts told us that that will mean inflows into the Indian bond markets in a big way. So in case you missed out on that headline, right, JP Morgan included uh, India in the JP Morgan Global Emerging Markets Bond Indices. Now, there's a maximum weightage of 10% that India can have in this global diversified index. And JP Morgan also said that 23 Indian government bonds with a combined notional value of $300 billion are eligible. Now, this, of course, has led to a rally in the, the bond market. A large inflow is expected into banks and domestic cyclicals as well. Just want to put out some views on the table. Uh, B. Prasanna of ICICI Bank, who we spoke to, said that from a long-term perspective, there could initially be $20 to $30 billion of passive inflows into the Indian bond markets. The rupee could appreciate further as well. And if India gets included in all three bond indices, then there could be passive inflows of $40 to $50 billion. IDFC First Bank said that in case India is included in the Bloomberg Global Aggregate Index, it could result in inflows of 15 to 20 billion dollars and they expect India's weightage to go up by an additional 0.6 to 0.8 percent. So, you know, this of course was the big positive. But Hiren, I wanted your views on it. From, an from a bond market standpoint, of course, we do understand that passive inflows will come through. But from an equity market standpoint, what is your view? So, I think, Sonia, it's, it's, it's a really positive uh, uh, outcome. We've been waiting for it for a very long period of time. And I think if one of the indexes is included, I think it's only a matter of time when the other indexes will also include us, right? And, and I think $40, $50 billion of inflows coming in will stabilize the rupee. Now, there are two positive impacts of that, right? One is that for foreign investors who invest in, in the equity markets in India, not only do they have to take a call about what returns they can make, but they also uh, have to factor in the currency impact. And usually, if you take a slightly longer term period, uh, the, the rupee has depreciated against the dollar by about 3-3.5% three, three average annualized. Right Now, if you have another source of inflows, which is steady, which, is, which could be anywhere between 30 to $50 billion, depending on how many... Uh, we get included in which indices, that's going to probably bring a lot more stability and confidence to the rupee. And that would mean that India would be become even more attractive. Uh, you know, anyways, India was one of the fastest growing and most attractive equity destinations. But now with the currency also being in the favor of the foreign investors, you could see even more flows coming into the equity markets because you know, there could not, you know, hopefully there won't be as much depreciation of the rupee uh, that we've seen in the past. That's one. The second impact of that is that it helps as bond yields cool down, uh, you could see cost of capital come down, right? And that's good because that's good for risk assets. Uh, you know, India needs a lot of capital to build infrastructure for growth, for entrepreneurship, for risk taking. And I think falling cost of capital means a higher P multiple. So I think India's premium right. uh, could well be more durable uh, sure, sure. because if bond yields come down, the equity yes. premium will reduce and cost of capital will also come down, which helps Got equities it. and valuations. All right, uh, Hiren, uh, thanks a lot. You know, we just need to take a short commercial break. We'll keep coming back to you for more. A slew of stocks have seen a big run-up, but this is largely due to a limited free float. So we'll get you a special analysis on the other side.